This is Mac Bain, Councillor for the City of North Bay, and proud to serve on the board of GFD Canada. GFD can help your municipal cemetery. <music>Your care and maintenance fund is the heart and soul of your cemetery. Not only is your fund governed by rigorous regulation, it also plays a vital role in the day-to-day -day management of your cemetery operation. Your team at GFD understands the unique needs of cemetery operators, and so we have partnered with Foist & Gordon Payne to bring to the sector a fund designed exclusively for cemeteries. Hi, I'm Brian Pilsworth, President of FGP. FGP has been managing money for many large Canadian pension plans, endowments and foundations since 1980 and it's because of your unique needs that we created the GFD Foist and Care and Maintenance Income Fund just for you. Our team understands the importance of growing your assets in a prudent manner to provide income for your cemetery. Together we will be working hard to bring you simple administration and enhanced returns to maintain and care for your cemetery for generations to come. Contact GFD at 1-800-268-2466 or email info at gfd.org and we'll help you get started. This is Matt Wren, Councillor for the City of Brockville and Director of Business Development at GFD Canada. If we can help your municipal cemetery, we'd be honoured. Have a great conference. Good morning, I'm Linda Carlton. I'm the Mayor for the Township of Macker and uh, for the District of Perry Sound on the Phnom Board. I'm pleased to introduce uh, Amy DiMatteo as Director General of Fed FedNor, Canada's Economic Development Organization for Northern Ontario. Amy's primary role is to ensure that FedNor, through its programs and services, delivers on its mandate to foster economic growth and diversification that leads to job creation and sustainable communities in Northern Ontario. Previously, Amy served as the Executive Director of the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund Corporation for eight years, where he was responsible for overseeing the service agency that provides financial assistance to projects with the aim of helping diversify the economy and bolster economic growth in the region. One of Amy's many accomplishments at FedNor is the development of the Prosperity and Growth Strategy for Northern Ontario, or PGSNO, the growth strategy is intended to enhance and build on the ongoing federal and provincial programs and collaborations to address the needs of Northern Ontario's communities and its residents. Amy has also worked hard to address labor shortages identified by Northern Ontario communities. Thanks to his advocacy work, the Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot Program was established. It's designed to spread the benefits of economic immigration to smaller communities by creating a path to permanent residents for skilled foreign workers who want to work and live in one of the participating communities. Five of the 11 pilot projects are taking place in Northern Ontario. Recognizing the economic potential of the growing focus on the clean green economy, including critical minerals, Amy, through his leadership, is positioning Northern Ontario as a significant contributor to this effort. Most recently, FedNor provided funding to enable the expansion of the hydrometallurgical cobalt refinery in North Cobalt. The facility will be the only one of its kind in North America, and once online, will capture 5% of the global market for refined cobalt, a required element needed to produce long-range electric vehicles. Thank you. You are muted. Just unmute and, and, and ask, okay, am I ready to begin? Good morning. Can the folks hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, we can hear you, Amy. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, so thank you for uh, that uh, wonderful introduction. Uh, I guess the, the, the biggest thing when Mac and I were talking about my bio uh, that I wanted to make sure was on there, that, of course, that I'm a, you know, a, a very loud and proud uh, Leafs fan. And so we're looking forward to uh, kicking the hell out of uh, Montreal uh, in a very short uh, series coming up very soon. So keep, keep tuned, everybody. 
Uh, Mac has asked me uh, just to mention a housekeeping note uh, before I start off, and that's in regards to the uh, questions, uh, if there's any questions for me later on, that they're to be posed through the Q&A function uh, and not chat. So uh, in that regard, uh, if there are any uh, questions going forward, please, uh, please go ahead and do that. I'm just going to load up my uh, presentation now, and I think I've got to share this screen. And so I'm hoping that you can see the first, uh, the first page of my presentation now. Not yet, Amy. Okay, hang on there. How's that? Yeah, you're good. Okay, good. All right, so moving right along. Okay, just give me a second here while I'm trying to figure this out. So over uh, the last year, next slide, please. So, um, you know, FedNorth mandate. So uh, most of you here today are very familiar with FedNorth, you know, and we've worked with, uh, you know, with organizations, uh, uh, including all the communities, municipalities in Northern Ontario, uh, you know, but we're known as the Government of Canada's Economic Development Organization for Northern Ontario, Bednor invests in strategic initiatives led by businesses, communities, and organizations, uh, and works with a, vari a variety of stakeholders to create good paying jobs in Northern Ontario. Uh, that's what we do. Uh, we do that through our grants contributions funding, but just as importantly, we also do, do it through our pathfinding and convener roles with our federal and provincial colleagues, both federal departments and provincial ministries. FedNOR operates, as you can see on this slide, six offices uh, from Kenora to Thunder Bay to Sault Ste. Marie, Timmins, Sudbury, and North Bay. In terms of FedNOR's investments, um, I can tell you over this last year, FedNOR has been extremely busy uh, in uh, delivering its regular programming and responding to the needs of businesses and communities across Northern Ontario as we work to recover from COVID-19 uh, in particular. Um, FedNOR delivered this past year over two and a half times more money uh, than the previous year. And last year, uh, the FedNOR team responded to six times the regular volume of applications that we usually receive and, and process. And so in addition to that, we worked with FedNOR clients to help them uh, mitigate the effects of the pandemic by allowing extensions of repayments on loans, helping to alleviate the burden and to maximize their cash flows. Uh, my presentation this morning is really focusing on the budget 2021 uh, and what it means to Northern Ontario. Um, the great, uh, great and first uh, point of that news is uh, you've all heard that FedNOR will be made into its own standalone agency a move many of you here today have supported over many years. Uh, in addition, Budget 2021 includes a wealth of programming that will be very relevant to communities and businesses across Northern Ontario. Uh, and these include the Canada Community Revitalization Fund, the Tourism Relief Fund, Supporting Job Growth Fund, and Supporting the Aerospace Sector. And I'll speak about each of those uh, very shortly. But first, uh, you know, FedNOR is a standalone agency. Uh, this has probably been, um, you know, a long-standing matter and issue for Northern Ontarians for a long time. Uh, and I guess you could say, if I'm looking at uh, at the slide, uh, you could say that the sun is rising over FedNOR today. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a picture of Algonquin Park. But uh, seriously, this decision is a shot in the arm for FedNOR. It will enable our organization to better serve the needs of Northern Ontario. And over the coming months, I can tell you that we're already working uh, with, uh, with the federal departments uh, to uh, ensure that there is a, uh, a, a complete transition that will uh, have FedNOR um, stand on its own as a standalone agency, similar to my colleague regional development agencies uh, that represent uh, other uh, regions across the country. The details in budget 2021 received great deal of attention. Uh, and of course, 
uh, you know, my own minister, Minister Melanie Jolie, has publicly spoken uh, about the reasons uh, for FedNOR becoming an agency. Uh, as most of you might know, FedNOR delivers services and programs similar to those of the regional development agencies across the country, uh, but we've always been uh, administratively, financially, and from an HR perspective, uh, integrated uh, within the Department of Innovation, Science, and Economic Development. So the creation of FedNOR as an agency uh, responds to needs identified by community and business leaders uh, and will see us um, a divorce going through a, uh, what I would say, a very, a very amicable divorce with the department uh, and ultimately setting up the agency on its own uh, standalone basis. As a as standalone agency, FedNOR will have more autonomy over its administration and activities. This will empower the team at FedNOR, enabling it to better respond to the needs of businesses, organizations, and communities across Northern Ontario. It will also allow us to more quickly launch new programs and the delivery tools that are needed for those programs uh, and to streamline the approval process that many of you have uh, you know, mentioned uh, in the past, not only to myself, uh, but to your MPs uh, and also to Minister Jolie in passing. Um, I, I want to just stop for a second and acknowledge the significant effort that uh, a whole bunch of Northern Ontarians um, brought to bear to make FedNOR the agency that it will become in the not too distant future. FNAM, of course, uh, has been tireless in its uh, efforts calling for FedNOR to become an agency, as has NOMA uh, and uh, the five urban mayors most recently, chambers of commerce uh, that have all spoken about uh, FedNOR needing to be uh, free and independent just like the other regional development agencies uh, are. Um, I mentioned the, uh, the five urban mayors because they recently penned a letter uh, to the government um, clearly indicating uh, the rationale and the need for FedNOR to become an agency. And so uh, my thanks to uh, all five mayors uh, for that um, a very powerful letter that was uh, sent to the government uh, in this regard. Uh, I, I also need to mention uh, Mayor Provenzano from Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, he has been a constant champion for FedNOR. Uh, and certainly, uh, given that his uh, local MP is Terry Sheehan, who happens to be the parliamentary secretary for FedNOR, um, Mayor Provenzano uh, always took the opportunity to make sure that Terry understood how important making FedNOR an agency was and, and is about to be. Lastly, but certainly not least, uh, I need to thank my minister, the Honorable Melanie Jolie. Uh, right from the beginning of her mandate when she assumed uh, the Economic Development Agency's portfolio uh, and, of course, official languages, um, she inquired with me uh, about why FedNOR was not an agency. Uh, and from that moment on, uh, she uh, took it upon herself to say, we've got to correct this. Uh, and so through her leadership, uh, we are where we are right now. Uh, and so pleased that in budget 2021, through her efforts, that FedNOR was finally uh, marked to become an agency uh, like all of the other uh, regional government agencies across the country. So uh, in that regard, there is much more to budget 2021. And I'd like to take a bit of time to talk about some of the new programs that will impact all of us here in Northern Ontario. Uh, the first one that you'll see on your screen is the Canada Community Revitalization Fund. Some of you may remember the Canada Improvement Fund 150 that was delivered, I think it was about three years ago, uh, uh, across the country and FedNOR had a role to play for Northern Ontario. This is uh, somewhat a continuation of that, uh, but it's more uh, focused on investing in community infrastructure projects that will stimulate local economies, create jobs, and improve the life uh, and quality of life for all Canadians. Um, across all of Canada and certainly here in Northern Ontario, our, our vibrant spaces and our communities have laid dormant as Canadians took precautions to stay safe during the COVID-19 pandemic. Recognizing that economic recovery is tightly linked to the vitality of local communities, like those represented here today by Phnom, Budget 2021 will provide $500 million over two years, starting in this fiscal year, to the regions, 
for community infrastructure. At this time, the specific allocation for FEDNOR and of course for Northern Ontario has yet to be finalized, including program eligibility criteria. Uh, we are working uh, quite fervently uh, with- A little uh, bit of a different boat. So I'm not really sure I should maybe uh, see if I can speak to Mayor. Oh, sorry, we just had an interruption there with uh, with uh, another spokesperson. Um, we expect eligible applicants will, incorp will of course include municipalities, First Nation communities, not-for-profit organizations, other regional organizations, uh, and, and probably other not-for-profit organizations that uh, I have not mentioned. Those details will be available shortly. And once we have uh, the details on the, on the program criteria, they'll be communicated uh, to all stakeholders across Northern Ontario. This is gonna be an excellent opportunity, I believe, for our communities to invest in some of the key assets. And we look forward to working with all of you to addressing your needs and to supporting Northern Ontario's economic recovery. The next major program uh, that was announced uh, was supporting jobs and growth. Uh, $700 million uh, uh, was announced to be uh, delivered across Canada's regions to support uh, businesses um, uh, to not only survive, but to prosper in the future. So uh, this new $700 million allocation will start flowing as quickly as possible starting this fiscal year to ensure businesses have the support they need to get through the pandemic and that they are well positioned to contribute to the economic recovery in Northern Ontario. The new initiative's main goal is to create jobs by supporting projects that will promote long-term growth, help Canadian businesses transition to a green economy, enhance Canada's competitiveness by helping SMEs adopt new technology, improve productivity, and automate manufacturing processes, and help foster an inclusive recovery. Program details, again, are still being finalized, uh, and we expect we'll be releasing those very shortly uh, to all of the stakeholders across Northern Ontario. Third major program uh, announced uh, is the Tourism Relief Fund. Businesses in every sector have felt the pain of COVID-19, but none as badly uh, and as uh, first and uh, as, uh, as deep as the tourism sector, which was particularly hit by the impacts of this unprecedented event. That's why over the past year, a large percentage of the funding allocated in Northern Ontario through the Regional Relief and Recovery Fund was focused on helping tourism business, businesses and outfitters pay their bills, keep the lights open, uh, and, uh, and provide for an opportunity for uh, continued success in the future. Uh, during this time, it was made very clear that additional and continued targeted support measures were required to ensure the survival of tourism operators affected particularly for us in Northern Ontario by border closures and travel restrictions. To respond to those needs, Budget 2021 has earmarked $500 million for what's called the Tourism Relief Fund to be delivered by, again, RDAs across the country, including FedNor for Northern Ontario. But however, even as the economy begins to open, business and international travel will take time to recover. Recognizing this challenge, the Tourism Relief Fund will support investments by local tourism businesses in adapting their products and services to public health measures and other investments that will help them recover from the pandemic and position themselves for future growth. And once again, program details are being worked out right now uh, and will be announced very shortly. Finally, uh, the fourth uh, and most significant uh, program announcement in Budget 2021 um, had to do uh, uh, in terms recognizing the restrictions on business and tourism travel that affected other key sectors in Canada's economy, and that includes the aerospace sector in particular. Here in Northern Ontario, we are home to a growing aerospace and aviation industry thanks to its strong history in advanced manufacturing. In fact, between 2017 and 2020, the sector in Northern Ontario saw a 23% increase in job numbers, largely linked to manufacturing activities, compared to 12% nationally. So again, kudos to uh, the aerospace sector companies uh, and their continued focus on, on growth. Uh, a couple examples in that regard, in Sault Ste. Marie, 
local companies such as JD Aero, uh, Springer Aerospace, and Humphrey Aircraft Services provide a full suite of maintenance, repair, and overhaul services for airlines around the world. In North Bay, a significant cluster of aerospace firms involved in a wide range of activities has been established at the North Bay Airport. Employing over 500 employees, this includes maintenance, repair and overhaul, flight training, and post-secondary aviation training activities with Canada College's uh, aviation program. While in Thunder Bay, companies such as Thunder Bay Aviation, Libero Aviation Group, Air Suite Zero Aviation Intertech Services, and Fuel Boss provide services in a variety of areas, including manufacturing of aeronautical products, developing enterprise level browser based products for the aviation maintenance management industry, and building aerial fuel tankers. These are but a few examples of what we have in the aerospace sector in Northern Ontario. And so it was vital uh, that we keep this momentum going uh, and that Northern Ontario companies uh, would have uh, the ability through the aerospace uh, uh, $250 million over the next three years uh, to have access to funding again through FedNOR uh, for their uh, continued project activities. The goal is to help them improve their productivity strengthen commercialization and to green their operations and products. We expect to soon again have full details on A, how much funding Northern Ontario will get from this fund uh, and the details uh, of the program to be announced very shortly also. This particular initiative is over and above and separate from uh, a, another program that FedNOR just recently announced and has been delivering called the Regional Air Transportation Initiative uh, that we've been working on uh, with a number of affected players, including airports over the last few months. I'll touch on this program generally called RATI uh, in, in a few moments. I wanna turn for a second to talk about the Regional Relief and Recovery Fund. Budget 2021 again provided more money for the Regional Relief and Recovery Fund established to support businesses and organizations economically impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. This fund has been providing much needed liquidity to, to keep businesses open and helping them bridge to a time of recovery. In Northern Ontario, FedNord delivered part of this program directly, uh, but also partnered with our community future development corporations across Northern Ontario uh, in getting money out the door uh, to companies that so badly needed it. Uh, I, I cannot uh, express enough um, uh, of my um, esteemed uh, recognition and congratulations to our CFTC partners who stepped up to the plate uh, and helped us deliver uh, this extremely important support to businesses and communities across Northern Ontario. So kudos to all 24 CFTCs for their efforts. And just to give you some sense from May 2020 to April of 2021, together we provided over $90 million in support to over 1,100 businesses and organizations in our region, nearly 360 of which are owned by women and 350 in the tourism sector alone. This funding provided through this program has helped protect more than 4,600 jobs in Northern Ontario. But the Government of Canada clearly recognized that the job wasn't over and so in addition, in budget 2021, they provided an additional $80 million for the program and an extension to the application deadline to June 30th, 2021, to again, continue to ensure that Northern Ontario businesses were gonna be helped um, through uh, not only uh, the relief, but uh, into the recovery. So we'll continue to work with applicants to help them through these difficult times and prepare them to move to recovery phases as we work to strengthen the region's economy. Let me now turn to uh, RADI, the Regional Air Transportation Initiative that I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago. Um, this, is, this was an, an additional excellent and important initiative that we've been working on uh, over the last year. Uh, as many of you know, FedNOR has been uh, accepting applications for funding under uh, this program, which aims to help 
affected by the economic impacts of COVID-19. This national initiative has a total budget of $206 million over two years, and it's also being delivered by the RDAs, including FEDNAR. And our budget in Northern Ontario is $24 million. Uh, and uh, the support will enable key players to remain operational through these difficult times and continue to support the economic growth of our regions. This includes regional and local air carriers, uh, of particular importance, regional and local airports, uh, and businesses and business groups and not-for-profit organizations uh, that are part of the regional air, air transportation ecosystem. We're well aware that in Northern Ontario, access to transportation is vital to our economy. We have large distances to bridge and remain relatively isolated from major business centers. So it's good news uh, that this funding has been provided to FEDNAR uh, to, uh, to provide it to our, um, our stakeholders across Northern Ontario. And we are continuing to accept applications as we speak to maximize that budget. I'd like to also take an opportunity to talk about the Black Entrepreneurship Program that the federal government announced. Uh, and it's another key initiative that's moving forward here in Northern Ontario uh, to uh, ensure that we are supporting Black entrepreneurship entrepreneurs uh, wherever they may be in Northern Ontario. For those of you not familiar with this program, it's a partnership between the Government of Canada, Black-led business organizations, and financial institutions. With an investment over $221 million over four years, it will help Black Canadian business owners and entrepreneurs grow their businesses and succeed now and into the future. Uh, FEDNOR will be uh, providing assistance uh, under the National Ecosystem Fund uh, to ensure that we have an ecosystem uh, in Northern Ontario that will enable Black entrepreneurs uh, uh, and businesses uh, to uh, go and speak to someone in Northern Ontario uh, uh, for uh, activity and for support. And we're currently uh, engaged with a not-for-profit organization that is uh, sit situated in Sudbury uh, and is looking to expand their reach across all of Northern Ontario to deliver services for Black entrepreneurs. And this would include new services or expanded offerings related to mentorship, networking, financial planning, and business training for Black entrepreneurs and business owners. I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about opportunities moving forward. Uh, and as you heard in, in the introduction um, about uh, the investment in net zero transformation, clean tech uh, and, and technology and clean energy, uh, you see a picture there of First Cobalt Corporation that is North America's only battery grade cobalt sulfate um, refinery um, in North America. And it has created a uh, hundred new jobs already. And so climate change is something that features prominently in budget 2021. Uh, and at the same time, it recognizes that companies will need assistance uh, if we're going to in fact take advantage uh, through our traditional economic pillars in energy, mining, agriculture, forestry, steel, aluminum, auto, aerospace, uh, to build a foundation for this new sustainable economy. So what does it look like in Northern Ontario? I would suggest to you uh, to support a healthy economy, we're seeing investments in new and innovative forest, forestry practices, new technologies in mining, electrification for our remote First Nation communities, solar energy and panel production, uh, and now a new focus on critical minerals. Let me just quickly give a few points on that, on that last point. The electrification of vehicles and use of solar panels is, expect, is expected to surge in the coming decade. And Northern Ontario has rich reserves of all of the critical minerals needed for electric vehicle batteries and solar panels, along with other low carbon technologies needed to reach net zero, Government of Canada's uh, promise. That's why we have seen an increasing global demand for many critical minerals found in Northern Ontario, in particular, nickel, cobalt, lithium, and graphite used in the manufacturing of batteries for electric vehicles. This presents a real opportunity for our region to contribute to Canada's push towards a clean and green economy and for our communities to benefit from the economic growth we expect as a result. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, uh, First, Cobalt, uh, First Cobalt Corporation 
uh, uh, you know, received $5 million loan from FedNOR and also a $5 million contribution from the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund Corporation of the Ministry of Northern Development and Mines. And it's, as I said earlier, it's the only facility of its kind in, in North America capable of producing 25,000 tons of battery grade cobalt sulfate annually, which represents 5% of the global uh, market for refined cobalt. This investment is leading to the creation of 100 jobs, but more importantly, it's putting Northern Ontario on the map as a supplier of key mineral uh, for these purposes. Another interesting project to watch for is lithium battery uh, materials refinery being proposed by Avalon Advanced Materials, uh, a company uh, out of uh, that has uh, activity in Northwestern Ontario. And they just recently signed a letter of intent with Fort William First Nation to locate their refinery plant on the community's industrial lands in Thunder Bay. And construction is expected to continue or to begin sometime in 2022. Uh, these projects are just the tip of the iceberg, in my opinion. We have the raw materials, and now we've got to explore the possibility of perhaps doing things like battery manufacturing right here in Northern Ontario. We have to look at opportunities beyond just simple extraction. We've got to get value added, uh, driven into, uh, into this sector uh, that will uh, help define the future economy in Northern Ontario. In that regard, FedNOR is currently engaging at the national, provincial and regional levels to develop a strategic approach to supporting opportunities for development in exploration and development of critical minerals and electric vehicle battery supply chains. As we move forward on developing an approach, we're looking to answer key questions like, what are the barriers and opportunities facing development of Northern Ontario based critical mineral supply chain? How can Northern Ontario attract investment in new processing capacity needs? What key industry partners should be engaged to best position Northern Ontario in securing new supply chain developments? Are there any missing linkages in critical mineral supply chain processes that should be included in a Northern Ontario critical mineral strategy? What could FedNOR do to help prepare businesses and community to be ready for and actively participate in this space? Budget 2021 presents an opportunity for us to answer a lot of these questions and to take advantage of a, a massive growing economy in this regard. Uh, we're working with uh, the uh, Federal Department of Natural Resources, NRCAN, uh, who have received some funding uh, out of budget 2021 uh, for funding research and development for advanced critical battery mineral processing, uh, and also uh, some funding uh, for uh, their further uh, support of federal colleagues to ensure Northern Ontario will be at the table. So the easy part is FedNOR is there, uh, will bring all the resources to bear as necessary, but we need you folks, the communities and the SMEs across Northern Ontario uh, to help us develop what this strategy should look like and to ensure that we take absolute advantage uh, of, of this growing economic opportunity. Uh, one other uh, point I'd like to speak to is the Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot uh, that was put in place, I believe now it's about two years old. It's, uh, it's uh, attraction or retention of talent, of course, is another important opportunity for our region. So I wanted to provide an update on the pilot program here in Northern Ontario. Uh, as you know, uh, FedNOR worked closely with uh, Immigration uh, Refugees and refugees Citizenship Canada in developing this pilot, which is connect, connecting skilled newcomers with opportunities in communities that need them. As you are aware, Northern Ontario continues to deal with a shortage of skilled workers and recruitment and retention has long been identified as an issue in our region. When you consider the fact that net immigration contributed to half of Canada's average GDP growth from 2016 to 19 and nearly three quarters of its growth in 2019 you can see why it was so important to ensure our communities were well represented and could benefit from this pilot program. We're all uh, aware uh, that five of the 11 communities selected across the, the country are here in Northern Ontario. And we're wanting to ensure that this through this pilot, our communities are assessing prospective candidates who best fit the economic needs of our communities. 
have a genuine employment opportunity that meets their community requirements, have the intention of staying in the communities uh, that they want to call home, uh, and are liaising with the businesses, business community to identify their needs for uh, this purpose. The Northern Ontario pilot communities have actively been doing outreach to the private sector as well. As of December 2020, all five of our community projects have recommended over 200 people to uh, IRCC for review and approval for permanent residency. Bednor supported the five pilot projects through additional funding uh, for participating communities by supporting things like project coordination, office and outreach, and promotion and marketing of the program. 2021 and the next few years, uh, we'll see this opportunity grow in Northern Ontario, and I'm quite certain that we'll see far many more hundreds uh, of, of uh, folks coming into Northern Ontario to call our place of business their home. Last but not least, just very quickly, uh, Bednor is engaging uh, with uh, the Department of uh, or ESDC to ensure Northern Ontario's workforce needs are considered in implementation and delivery of new budget 2021 programs over the next three years. Uh, the programs are there as you see. Uh, I will um, not mention them uh, too much in detail other than to say uh, these programs uh, are going to be brought to bear in Northern Ontario. FedNor through its uh, collaboration with ESDC is going to ensure that our communities and our businesses will be able to take advantage of all of these tens of hundreds of millions of dollars uh, that are being proposed, proposed through this program. So folks, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, I'm not certain how much time I've taken, but I hope that you will agree that the programs I've highlighted will be of significant benefit to Northern Ontario uh, now and in the future. FedNor looks forward to working with our federal colleagues and all of our Northern Ontario stakeholders to build back better and stronger. Thank you, Phnom, for allowing me this opportunity. Uh, Mac, thank you very much for working with me uh, on this uh, address today. And now I'd be pleased to take uh, any questions from the audience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amy. I have a few questions for you that have come in. Sorry, I'll just cut rid, get rid of some feedback there for us. Um, one of the questions um, came in uh, ahead of time uh, and was in regards to um, the airport, uh, uh, small and rural airports in Northern Ontario uh, that are really struggling to survive through, throughout this pandemic. Uh, air travel and charter flights are down by 75% which greatly reduces an airport's revenue. How quickly do you see the funding being approved for programs such as the uh, ACIP, and you did touch on the regional airports, uh, to help uh, with liquidity issues and their aging structure uh, in infrastructure? Yeah, uh, thanks for that question. I, I Unfortunately, I can't speak about uh, the, uh, minister, uh, the minister, the Department of Transport program, but I can certainly speak to uh, the regional um, uh, air initiative that FedNor has launched and the $24 million that uh, we've been provided in that regard. Uh, we have received already, we've been working uh, with our, uh, our community airports across Northern Ontario now for several months. And we have already received over 19 applications asking for more than $20 million. Uh, we understand the importance of keeping our airports open because once they close, it's gonna be difficult to reopen them. Uh, and so we've already approved, I'm pleased uh, that we, we approved and announced assistance to the Sault Ste. Marie Airport. Uh, and uh, we have received applications from uh, most of the other large airports already, including many small uh, rural airports. Uh, and I'm confident that within the next couple of weeks, uh, you'll see the majority of that funding being approved and announced. Uh, and 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 uh, move forward for implementation and getting the hands in the money of the uh, of the airports that's so badly needed. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, the next one is in regards to uh, airports as well. Um, will your uh, agency be able to assist um, the four large airports in uh, northeastern Ontario to become ports of entry? 
Uh, most definitely. Uh, I mean, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's the other role that Bednor plays beyond just, you know, providing grant contributions uh, is to ensure that we are liaising and collaborating uh, and pathfinding with our, our federal partners and provincial partners to ensure that everyone understands the importance uh, of uh, our, four, our, our, you know, our four, or I'll say our, our five large municipal airports and the important role that they play. And so we will be pleased to lend our voice and our effort to ensure that uh, we can make some, uh, you know, make something happen in that regard, uh, and uh, and uh, increase the momentum to get, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the federal Department of Transport uh, to to see uh, those airports in that light. Thanks. Okay. The next uh, question is uh, about uh, rail transportation. What about uh, the uh, the Ontario Northlander, the ONTC's train coming back to Northern Ontario corridor? so that Northern residents can access the South to connect with families and healthcare. Do you see F uh, FEDNOR playing a role? Um, not directly at this time. Certainly uh, ONTC, as you're all aware, is an agency of, uh, of the province of Ontario. And so the, the province is, uh, you know, is moving forward with that plan. Um, so we think that the province of Ontario is, is most uh, suited uh, to ensure that that service uh, gets uh, reactivated properly. However, having said that, if there are economic opportunities in communities uh, where the train is going to uh, be, uh, and that perhaps there's some infrastructure needed to ensure that the communities have a welcoming train station, if you will, and other economic benefits, uh, certainly I think that that's something that we would be interested in discussing uh, and maybe bringing the infrastructure program uh, that I, uh, I spoke about earlier uh, to bear and bring uh, funding to those communities to help with that kind of assistance. Okay, thank you. Um, that's it for questions right now, Amy. Thank you very much for your presentation. And there must be a hater in your office because your bio did not include the fact that you uh, are a Leafs fan. Uh, <laughs> you, that, you and I talked about it, but it, your final bio didn't come. Uh, actually, there, just before I, I do leave, there is a question that just came in. Um, how, uh, how can your agency help not-for-profit organizations that are, uh, are, that are struggling at this time? Uh, we have helped uh, a number of uh, not-for-profit organizations through the Regional and Relief Recovery Program um, uh, in terms of helping, uh, helping these organizations if they are economic development related organizations. Uh, to keep the lights on uh, and pay the bills uh, and looking forward to getting out of, uh, of relief and into recovery. Uh, and so if, uh, you know, someone has a particular uh, idea or uh, is, is thinking of a particular not-for-profit that perhaps hasn't received any assistance to date from the federal government, I'd certainly be pleased to have a discussion with them in that regard. But uh, we want to make sure that our not-for-profit organizations are just as important in the economic fabric uh, in Northern Ontario. And so they need support also, and FedNor will be there to support them, I promise. Thank you very much, Amy. Uh, I appreciate it. And uh, that uh, do you have any final comments that you'd like to make uh, before uh, we uh, officially thank you? No, uh, listen, I, you know, again, thank you very much. Uh, you know, I look forward to, uh, you know, next year when we can actually do this face to face. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity that Mac has provided, uh, that you provided to me uh, in, in speaking this morning. Uh, and um, as you all know, I'm only a phone call away and I look forward to our continuing discussions on any of the matters that I've talked about this morning or any other ideas or opportunities uh, that you see in your communities uh, that Bednor could play a role in. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Amy, for your presentation and for FedNor's continued support of Phnom and our northern communities.